Hey guys, welcome to our channel. In today's video, we're going to show you how we made this simple modern bookshelf. If you're looking for a project you can knock out on a weekend, we will have plans and templates available. Every project starts with some rough wood, and this has to be one of my favorite parts of any build. Digging through the rough lumber, finding the perfect pieces for my build that'll be able to mold into a nice piece of furniture. So luckily for this build, I have templates. Templates make it way easier to lay out your lumber because you know exactly how big your pieces are gonna be, saving you a bunch of time and waste in the end. Since I didn't have any really wide boards over 12 inches, I had to glue together pieces to make up my three shelves. So now I'm kind of new to using templates in this manner. I've used a lot of templates in the past, but never to actually make pieces of furniture. So now we're just gonna lay these out, mark around them, and then head over to the bandsaw and cut them into even more manageable pieces. And to get the rough shape, I'm gonna glue my templates to some of my pieces. I didn't realize we had any double-sided tape, so I'm using the poor man's double-sided tape method here. So I made a few renditions of this top piece. The first two, I cut with the arc in the shape of the template, but that didn't give me any square surface to make the nice clean cuts at. So after remaking those, I cut the angles of the top piece on the miter saw, and then cut the angles of the legs on the table saw. So what I should have done was just made a quick sled on the table saw to make them nice perfect cuts. It got the job done, but it would have been way easier with just a simple throwaway table saw sled. Just keep some plywood on hand and some scraps and you can quickly make something. If you watch Four Eyes Furniture, he does this a lot. And that is exactly what I'll do if I make these again. So now that we have our templates laid out on our pieces and we know everything's gonna line up, the corners are nice and tight, we're gonna glue this thing together. There's still a lot of meat left on these, but that's okay, because I'd rather have more room to work than having to squeeze it in a tight area. We're gonna use dominoes to assemble it. I know a lot of people don't have a domino, but you could easily use doubles to do the same exact thing. So I'm gonna glue in a domino on each side and then let these sit for a few hours and then glue up the other one and then let those sit overnight. So the glue up of this was a little odd, but a few clamps and everything pulled together nice and tight. So now that these are out of the clamps, I'm just gonna sand down any high glue spots. And right here, everyone's gonna hate me. We had the luxury to have a giant drum sander since we do this full time, so I'm gonna get everything a few passes through here to get everything nice and even. So I will be offering plans and templates with this build. You'll be able to buy the plans along with SVGs to cut your own templates or PDFs to have them printed out and then cut your own templates that way. Or you can pay extra and I will send the templates to you. I tried a few template renditions here and I just, I couldn't get it to work and seat together tightly. So I just played it safe, numbered them, and just split them down the middle. Just to make shipping and everything a little easier since I had to make them repeatable if I were to send them out to people. So now to cut the final shapes of the sides. I'm gonna attach the templates to the pieces with double-sided tape. I tend to always use too much, so getting them apart is a little tough, so maybe back off on the double-sided tape.
And now on over to the bandsaw to remove any extra meat that I can to make the router bit work a little bit easier. So this part coming up is a good reminder to always use push pads. Luckily nothing happened. One of the legs slipped off, leaving a big old gouge in one of the legs, which is no big deal. We're gonna show you guys how we're gonna fix that in a little bit. But that's also one of the reasons I love woodworking because errors come up and you just need to figure out and troubleshoot how you're gonna solve the problem. So we're just taking nice slow passes with the flush trim router bit. All these clips are kind of sped up for your viewing pleasure, so I'm not quite going this fast in real life. So take your time, use your push pads, and just work your way around the piece. If you're not comfortable, possibly take two passes. When using routers, I always kind of avoid the edge. It probably would be just fine, but the last thing I want right now is a blowout on an edge, so I just kind of feather everything smooth and blend it nicely. To remove the templates, I just like sliding a putty knife underneath there to kind of remove that tape, and it works pretty good. And now to deal with the blowout I had earlier. So one pass through the joiner, knocked it down enough to where it wouldn't be visible. We're gonna put a profile on this and that should erase the mistake completely and no one will ever know, unless they watch this video. So I traced the outline on this before I added the tape just to make lining it up a little easier. We're gonna use the first piece we made just to ensure that both pieces are perfect. And now we're just gonna do the exact same thing as before. Take your time and work your way around the piece so we have two identical pieces. And we're gonna sand these one more time, ensuring that they're equal and everything's the same before we pry these apart. And you think I would've learned from the first time, but I did not, so here we are, spending too much time trying to pry these apart. So we're gonna add a profile to the outside of the legs. We're gonna use a half inch round over bit, but it's only gonna stick out about two thirds of the way. This will leave a nice pillow or thumbnail profile, giving the legs a nice extra dimension. Now set them aside, grab your shelves, and we're gonna cut them to their final dimensions. Once the shelves are to the final dimensions, I'm gonna label everything so I don't get anything mixed up and add the same exact profile to the front of the shelves. but instead of using a half inch bit, we're gonna use a 3 8 bit and then set that two thirds out of the table to achieve the same exact look. And again, better safe than sorry, so I always avoid the edges with the router bits. Now I'm just gonna kind of feather them smooth on the outsides of the legs and in the corners of the shelves. And then I'm also gonna look over the pieces, give them a quick sanding, removing any chatter marks or burn marks left behind from the router base. One more trip over to the router table, this time adding a 16th inch round over to the inside of all the legs. So now that our legs are almost complete, we're gonna take them over to the table saw because it's a nice flat surface and ensure that the bottom of the legs are even and have the right angle. Mine were a little bit off, so I'm just gonna take them and trim them so that they're identical.
So now we're gonna go ahead and lay out all the marks for our dominoes or doubles. This part is super important because if these marks are off, your shelf will not go together. Once I laid out all the marks on the legs, I simply transferred them over to the shelves by setting the shelf on top of the legs, getting the exact layout on the shelves. And if you do purchase plans, I'll have all these laid out in diagrams, making this relatively painless. So as we mentioned before, we're gonna be using the domino to lay all this out. And quite honestly, I think it would have been easier just to use a double jig for this. Set the jig on the mark, drill your hole, instead of wrestling a big machine and laying out all these extra lines. First I made a makeshift fence out of scrap to ensure that the domino would line up nice and straight. And then I used this layout tool to mark the depth. Triple check, double check, check it a bunch because you only get one shot at sinking these dominoes. I used eight by 40 millimeter dominoes here, 15 millimeters into the legs and 25 millimeters into the shelves. And if you really wanted, you could just pre-drill through all these holes, countersink the outside of the shelves, use a screw and just cap it off. So since the layout of this was so crucial, I put everything together temporarily. And as you can see, I only used two shelves. It's because I was too lazy to make a bunch of sacrificial dominoes. The dominoes go together super tight and I only had eight of them and it's kind of a pain to sand them all down. So I just put the shelf together two times to ensure that everything lined up. And now that we're sure everything lines up, we're gonna give everything a quick final sanding so that you don't have to worry about missing any spots after boo up. And if you can, get an extra set of hands for this just because there's a lot of pieces, dominoes, dowels, the glue up process will be exactly the same. But by yourself, it can be a struggle to juggle multiple pieces. Started out by seating the shelves almost completely into one side, having Jez help me align them up while I tapped everything into place. I didn't use a ton of glue, more so just glued the dominoes in place versus actual glue on the shelves. But once you're done, go back through and scrape off any visible glue you can to make the final sanding a little more manageable. So now we're gonna blow off any dust cleaning the shelves after the final sanding. We're gonna give it one coat of Walrus Oil Furniture Finish, let that dry, add one coat of Walrus Oil Furniture Butter, and I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna let you enjoy the rest of the video and end it with some B-roll. 